1 Corinthians 12, 21 says, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. Every member of the church congregation is blessed with a different set of skills and talents. And embracing all of those is essential to building a strong community of believers. While some may excel in teaching or shepherding, others may find that there are strengths in technology, which brings us here today. God has bestowed each person with these gifts for a reason. And it's up to us, the church, to create an environment that encourages people to take advantage of their skill sets and use them in ways that glorify him. We live in a world that is constantly evolving and adapting. Emerging technologies need not contradict our beliefs. Instead, they can actually help us spread God's word. When we look at the scripture for guidance, we learn that leveraging new advancements can fit perfectly in what we are set out to do which is to glorify God and make disciples. I received an email a couple of weeks ago that said church filmmakers and media directors have, a, have become the secret weapon against isolation and fear caused by this pandemic. And we are here tonight to talk about the media ministry in a pandemic. Hello, my name is Daniel Dunson, owner of Complete Concepts Media Group and media director for Vision Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. I want to welcome you tonight to a conversation on the media ministry in a pandemic. I have some very special guests with me to talk about a conversation that I feel the church needs during this time of unrest. But let me first state the purpose of this conversation. It is to number one, give encouragement to church media directors, media ministry volunteers, as well as pastors affected by this pandemic. You may feel tired or burnt out just know that your work is not in vain and you're doing a great job and keep going. Secondly, this conversation is also to help any churches that may not know what to do as far as the media ministry concerns during this pandemic and to give practical advice and resources to help you out. My first guest tonight is a guy I met about 10 years ago. He would come around the church I was working at at the time and follow our audio director there. Through the years, I've seen him grow into the, in the area of audio and church production he is one of the humblest and baddest sound techs in the world. He is the owner of Live Management and Consultation and Assistant Audio Director for World Overcomers Christian Church in Durham, North Carolina, where Pastor Andy Thompson is pastor. Please help me welcome Mr. Manny Smith. My second guest is a brother that hails from the big town of Lewisburg, North Carolina. I'm also from Lewisburg and growing up there, we will see each other not knowing that years later we will be in the same field and profession. This guy has a keen and creative eye for detail and excellence, and that shows and is evident in his work for the local church and his clients. Let me introduce Mr. Michael Yarborough, the owner of Cinema One Films and media director for Raleigh North Christian Center here in Raleigh, North Carolina, where Pastor Dr. Jeffrey Chapman Sr. is the pastor. My next guest is a man who I've come to have a newfound respect for, especially during this pandemic. His love for God, his family, and the people is evident for his work in the kingdom and just knowing him. It's none other than the lead pastor of Vertical Church in the big town of Hillsboro, North Carolina. Pastor Ryan Brooks, please welcome Pastor Brooks. Our next guest is the worship and arts pastor at Southbridge Fellowship. He is also one of the most creative, talented, and generous people I know. I probably wouldn't have half of the equipment I have now if it wasn't for this guy. Please help me welcome self dating And last but not least, our next guest is a guy of many talents. He is a rapper, a singer, a videographer, a photographer, a graphic designer. He is one of the most skilled and most multi-talented guys I know. He is the media director of Strong Tower Christian Fellowship in Clayton, North Carolina, and owner of Vision Starters. Please help me welcome Mr. Darius Carr. First question, as a media director or a worship pastor, um, how has this pandemic affected you? when it comes to the media ministry? And I, Mike, I wanna start off with you on this question. Yeah, sure, that's a really good question. I think universally it's affected a lot of people, right? Um, you see a lot of places shut down. I think specifically as a media director, um, it, it's had an impact because I think for one, we're seen as essential, right? Um, the, the word must go on. And in, in a lot of cases, if you didn't already have, you know, streaming or some sort of online platform set up you were scrambling you know trying to trying to figure out how you know how to make it happen so i think you know for the, through the pandemic even though a lot of people were either off or unable to go to church i think week in and week out 
for us, we were still on. So, you know, still on on Sundays, still still on on Wednesdays. Um, or even if we were in a situation where we, were, where we pre-record services, we're still on, on during the week to make sure that gets recorded um, or to um, edit or whatever the case might be. So I think it, it, it affected us and, and kind of heightened our importance in, in terms of what we do week in and week out. Um, I think for me, it, it was almost eye-opening um, just because you, you know your job is important and people were always you know in church and our job is always to enhance the experience in church, but now no one can come to church. So it's, it's like, okay, well, what can we do differently? Or how can we, we make sure we have a, you know, we keep a status quo, so to speak, um, in terms of making sure the word continues to go out. Gotcha. How about you, Seth? Yeah, I think just uh, the word I keep referring to is like being nimble right now. You know, it's like a constant game of adaptation and, uh, yeah, I think just trying to, I mean, you're learning new things all the time, trying new things. Um, like I, I oversee our worship and arts ministry, but production's still kind of under that umbrella as well. And um, yeah, there were things I think early on, just trying to adjust lighting, all these different, you know, you're used to playing into a room of, that's full of people, you know, and just the interaction. So how do you know, trying to overcome some of the challenges of making things feel live or engaging, you know, content wise for people. Um, and just, yeah, I think just trying to find people where they're at, you know, it's like, it's, yeah. uh, it's, you can't guarantee them to always show up, you know, but I think just trying to stay focused on, on the quality of the content, the things that you're producing, putting out, you know, just trying yeah. to minister, reach people where they are. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. So, uh, Manny, um, like you, uh, you become a, a, a guy of many traits, uh, um, but your specialty is audio. I guess, how has this pandemic affected you as a, a assistant audio director? Our perspective, um, we really had to dig into our stream. Um, so our stream was a house mix. We were trying to transition into getting our broadcast unit back up and running because um, it went down with the issue we had. Um, so that was the main thing, getting back up to, we went through actually three different phases. Um, so we went from one console doing it one way to another same console doing it a different way. Um, and now we've hit our mark where it's really stable. So from that perspective, just realistically had to get our, um, like I said, the streaming aspect back up, get it super tight, but as well as cater to the people in the room. So of course, um, I don't know if you guys have been to our facility or whatever, but we have front of house and monitors, so still making the room feel comfortable and making the band still feel comfortable and kind of making the house still feel semi-full, even though you know we don't want to overwhelm anyone, but still from that perspective, just making sure everybody still feels important and still feels like it's a live aspect, even though you know, there's nobody in the room. Yeah, so that's kind yeah. of where it is for us. Uh, how about you, Darius? Yeah, for me, um, it, it was something similar to uh, to Manny. Uh, I was, because when I got to my church, they had no media director, no nothing. They were just kind of trying to do what they could from week to week. And so I was, I came in and joined the church and with, with my media background, tried to kind of get us on track and I was getting into the live aspect and consoles and uh, cam links and streaming and all that stuff. And uh, I, luckily, right before the pandemic hit in January, I kind of I bought a cam link with the uh, with the hopes of learning to use it and learning how to stream. And then we'll move up from there as the budgets grow and stuff. But luckily, I bought that cam link and that cam link has saved us uh in this time because cam links are any any kind of streaming capture anything is sold out right now so uh i've been using that my laptop they, they didn't even have really a dedicated computer so i've been using my stuff and trying to get everything going so it, it's a small ministry and it's growing but uh when it hit it really taught me a lot and to the point where now i'm actually teaching other people like how to go you know other smaller churches 
um, you know, maybe churches that was in the country who didn't really think they needed live. And now they're asking me, like, how do you do this? How do you do that? So um, it's been a, a real learning experience in this time. Got you. Got you. Now, Pastor Brooks, uh, this pandemic has kind of hit you um, and placed you and thrown you into a role that you pretty much, um, I'm pretty sure that you never thought you, that you would be in. Uh, on a weekly basis, you have a dual role of teaching, uh, preaching, uh, uh, the praise and worship team singing. You have the dual role of filming, filming yourself teaching, the praise and worship uh, team singing, and then taking all that footage and editing it uh, to look good for social media on Sunday morning. Uh, tell me, as a pastor, how I, 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 can, I can understand how the situation has affected you, but out of your own words, how has this, um, how, how, how has it really affected you? And what have you learned from this new role? And has it given you a newfound respect for media directors and the media team? Yeah. So, uh, you know, after planting our church almost eight years ago, man, now being hit with COVID-19, it was uh, quite overwhelming. Uh, so I tell people, uh, you know, I kind of became a part-time pastor and almost a full-time media director, you know, doing the production and stuff because, uh, you know, that's what was needed. And I think, you know, COVID-19 with all kinds of churches, uh, we've had to pivot and the needs of the church uh, has changed. You know, I'm sure, and if they haven't, most churches and pastors, I know we had to reevaluate our budgets, get to reevaluate our time, get to reallocate uh, where we we're gonna put our, you know, our resources. And so for me hitting COVID-19, our specifically, we got moved in back into my house. We had some people that are part of our team that when the COVID first hit, we felt like we couldn't even come back to the church because like we just wanted to exercise extreme caution. So, you know, my living room, uh, we had the iMac, we had a little, you know, a uh, fold out table set up and we added all these lights and cameras and my seven year old, I teach him how to run pro presenter because my daughter at the time was four, so she couldn't read yet. So he was the only one in the house that could read. My wife, luckily, is uh, thankfully is our, one of our worship leaders. She's our worship uh, director for our church, and so we could we had the ability to do everything out of the house and keep everybody as safe as possible. So you know, teaching from teaching my son pro presented to getting a mixer that's fit for the house and getting you know two or three shots and oh my God, learning Adobe Premiere. You know, and then the idea of even mixing, you know, audio with click tracks and making sure all that stuff works together was extremely overwhelming. I think one of the things that I learned most is um, the medium is the message. The medium is the message. I, and I, my, my real hope, you know, is because I get reached out to a lot of churches. Hey, how did you do this? What kind of camera? And I'm like, there's so much more than me just giving you a list of what I have. It doesn't work just like that. But but you need to take the media, uh, the media ministry seriously because uh, everything communicates. The quality of the picture, the quality of the sound, the lighting, all, everything communicates. My kids know right now at three o'clock in the afternoon during the summer, that's when we shot all of our video because that's where the best natural light was coming in, including with our with our lights that we had, like everything communicates. And so I think that's probably one thing, the medium is the message. And uh, every church should consider that, whether it's their graphic design, whether it's a video or their audio, uh, the medium is the message. Then I think the second thing is, you guys have kind of all said it, you gotta be a learner, you know, uh, as, as the lead pastor, you know, I couldn't say, well, we don't have anybody for us. Our media director has stepped down maybe four uh, months earlier. He had had his uh, fourth child under the age of six. And so he was like, man, my wife ain't gonna let me do this no more. And I was like, brother, you need to stay home, do your thing. We're gonna be good. The Lord will provide. Little did I know that we would be moving everything into the house for a while. So we just moved back into our church the 1st of July. So we got we got a person that does video, does the editing for us. Now we are able to you know, get back on our, 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 our board that we've been using. You know, our, I didn't know all these names of the Midas, you know, M32. I'm learning all these boards now, these digital boards that we're using and all this equipment and certain microphones. But we're able to get back. So it's not as heavy on me now. Uh, now, uh, the big thing is teaching other people on our team. That was probably the biggest thing uh, that I would say for any media or production director or anybody that does it in the church. Make sure you're training somebody else. Like, like you said earlier, uh, Michael, you're pivotal, you're critical, you're more than essential right now. We need what you have in somebody else. And I think that's a good part of leadership. Good leaders 
uh, make more leaders. And so uh, that's probably the biggest thing is I wish somebody would have, you know, written it down, took a video, <laughs> labeled something, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, Daniel, you, you came to the church, you like, so what's going on? I was like, yeah, bro, I don't know. Bro. You got this great A10, you know, Black Magic Studio. I don't know how to use it. Nobody here knows how to use it. So, you know, poor little me, I got to hit up YouTube and say, okay, let's figure it out. You know, call them, say, hey, how do you do this? Like all that good stuff, man. So be learners and then the medium is the message. Wow, that's good. That's real good, Pastor. Um, so uh, it's safe to say that that uh, the budget for the media team for your church is going up. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, listen, I'm trying to buy Black Magic everything myself now. Like, I want to make everything talk so I can change my colors and such. I mean, I'm sorry, that's not my area. That's y'all stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's going up for sure. Because you got to invest right. into what's yeah. important. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, so in, in most, most cases, uh, the church is, is somewhat looked, um, uh, at, as looked at for the two fourth direction when things happen in society, uh, before the pandemic, we, for the most part knew the script of our day-to-day -day lives in ministry. Uh, but since the pandemic has shut everything down, um, we kind of had to make up the script as we go. Some churches were able to confront the pandemic and not miss a beat. Uh, but back to you, Pastor Brooks, do you think the church has dropped the bar when it comes to the handling of the pandemic from a media side? Um, and since you have had to jump into that dual role, what are some suggestions you would give a church that may not quite fully understand the impact of this pandemic on the church and the media team? Uh, actually, I do feel like the church, I would say for the most part, uh, ha maybe has dropped the ball on this, because I think in large part, the church has taken this angle of, hey, let's get the most for the least. Let's get the most for the least. When it comes to technology, and, and I've been an advocate for this, even when I was an executive pastor years ago, you know, when it comes to technology, you have to invest. It's going to cost, you know, if you want it to work a certain way. And so I think that's kind of where we've dropped the ball, I would say, you know, wanted the most for the least, uh, you know, wanting excellence without cost. And it, it's just, it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. It's going to cost you to invest. So uh, my, my biggest, uh, you know, encouragement to, to churches or pastors, you know, really evaluate what's most important. If you're trying to get the message out, and you yeah, want it to be yeah. quality, you know, you, you want people to take it seriously. And that, that's the thing. You know, uh, people are attracted to excellence. And now with a culture where uh, media is so high and is so uh, readily available to anyone, uh, people take you seriously by the quality of the experience that you create, you know, whether it's on their phone or their computer or even in house, like all of that, they take it seriously. Uh, so I would say, you know, really, really do some homework. And if you don't, Pastor, if you're watching this and you don't know anything about it, find somebody that does and trust them. You got to do both. I think a lot of times we find a media director and then when they tell us, hey, this is what it's going to take. It's like, well, no, we can do it. Another one's like, no, no, no. You know, if your media director does not help you teach you how to preach, don't don't try to tell them how to do, you know, the media. Like, so no kind of your lane because we're a team. The church is many members with one body. So I would say, you know, find that right person and then trust them and then encourage them. And I would even say invest to their training and equipping. You know, my big thing is that, you know, if you're a pastor, you can't just have somebody want want everything out of them, but you haven't invested to send them to conferences, you know, get them on tutorials, you know, whatever, uh, whatever you could get for them, uh, trainings, whatever, and just ask them, hey, how can we best invest in you to equip you uh, yeah. uh, to, to be your best for the church? So, yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, so let's let's pivot a little bit to uh, to streaming and, and, and equipment. Um, me as the media director here at Vision Church, uh, I got our churches live streaming set up and working maybe a week before shutdown. Everything got shut down here. Um, I, I, being honest, I procrastinated uh, about setting up, setting up our live streaming capabilities. And it wasn't that I didn't know how to do it. I, I had all the equipment, I had everything that I needed. Um, but I just procrastinated uh, to take, I, it, I just took my own time to take, to set it up. And, but thank God I did uh, set it up when I did, because I did drop the ball on that. Um, so two questions. Um, 
and I, and I pose this to, to Manny, uh, Mike, and uh, Darius. Uh, so two questions. For you guys, now that you kind of all kind of have the groove of everything, do you ever look back and say, man, I wish I would have done, purchased this equipment or installed that so software before the, uh, all of this happened? If so, what was it and how has that situation, how has this situation affected your planning as a media director? Uh, I guess I'll go first since you called me first. Um, I think for our ministry, as far as uh, the church where I attend and work, fellowship, I think we were cool because we, I mean, it was just a matter of doing the same thing with no people, realistically. Because all of our gear, everything has already been equipped. We were already streaming in multiple platforms. Everything has already been in place from that standpoint. Um, I think it was just a matter of, I think we tried to do a couple more platforms. I think um, Morgan, who's right over me, um, he's been working on doing Instagram, um, streaming to Instagram as well, which a lot of churches aren't necessarily streaming to Instagram, which it can be done. So he's been doing tests with that. And that's the only thing that we really up to. Um, but as far as outside stuff like my clients i have the uh, churches outside I deal with definitely was from their perspective i had to get the ball rolling on a few different clients as far as especially from audio just trying to get you know getting calls every day i just actually did a service call today um right before i did this and it was just one of those things where either my audio wasn't as good as i thought it was or it was get my audio or I didn't have the video capability as well as well as the tools to get the video into the software and then the ability to stream and trying to figure out what platform, whether it's Wirecast, live stream. I know some churches are um, no disc taking the cheaper route on Switcher, which is cool. I think it's really cool to be able to use multiple iPhones and do up to seven cameras. That's kind of cool. Um, not my forte, um, cause that's a lot of bread that's made in iPhones or trying to find them. But at the same token, I think that's a cool thing, but just trying to get everybody up and running, you know, from different clients, different perspectives, from audio to video to like, okay, you know, we need to get some lighting to go with this. I know a lot of churches didn't have good lighting and then figuring out, well, are you gonna do, and then figuring out outdoor church and then figuring out how to get internet outside so you you know realistically you want to have a hard wire connection when you are streaming you don't really want to rely on wi-fi so getting those guys up and running from that <laughs> perspective so i mean just having you know even one of my clients i really did a backdrop for them because they didn't like their backdrop i looked on camera because i think they never really paid attention to it because they weren't super huge on streaming, you know, they were cool with the congregation. So we did a whole new backdrop just so it looked good on camera. So it's just different angles of my perspective. I've had to kind of cater to different people and different needs just to make sure they can make it through the rest of this pandemic, however long that lasts, just so they're smooth selling. And then from this point on, we'll just grow from there. Um, Cause it seems like everybody's been pretty happy with the work. So, you know, I've been telling them, okay, cool. This is this phase we're at now. Let's look into this next step and we'll go from here to make sure you're up and running or go to a different platform and we'll get you by an OBS. And then we'll go to something where you purchase that may be a little bit more stable, depending on if OBS has, you know, some churches, it lags a little bit, depending on how much movement you're doing. So, you know, those things, just trying to get everybody up and running. Gotcha, Mike. Yeah, I think similar to what Manny said, we've been up and running on streaming for a while. So it, it was not, nothing really new to us. Um, but in terms of equipment, um, I value leadership at the church because they, they saw the importance of us having streaming in place and also having the conversations about, you know, what upgrades do we need to make? What steps do we need to take to improve what we already have? So we started those conversations before COVID-19 hit, but we hadn't made any, taken any action to actually, you know, purchase those things. Um, our in-house audio is amazing. We have a great audio engineer um, who helps run the service, um, but our streaming audio wasn't really the best. So after the pandemic hit, we started to try to make tweaks and changes here and there. Um, they didn't really work to, to where we, we wanted it to be. So uh, I think we had a couple of services where um, audio either went out or we had phasing issues or, you know, something happened where 
some portion of the congregation or virtual uh, congregation couldn't hear what was happening. Um, but I will say we, we that accelerated some of the conversations we needed to have around, you know, what equipment we need to get, you know, how quickly can we get it in. But I think similar to what Darius said and what uh, others have said, we saw a lot of equipment being out of stock. So even though we wanted to purchase it and get it, you know, equipped and get it in, we just couldn't because everyone else was also trying to buy it. So um, I think we're, we're in a better place now because, um, you know, we're the last couple of weeks we've been installing some new equipment. So hopefully uh, once we get back in, uh, we'll, we'll be able to improve not only the experience inside the, the church, but also outside um, for those who are streaming. Obviously, that, that's going to continue for a while longer. So um, just continue to make incremental improvements on what we already have and what we're, we're working to install now. Um, and similar to what Manny said, um, you know, we, I've had other churches reach out to me too, who are in some of the more rural areas that don't have dedicated, you know, Wi-Fi in the church, who haven't prepared and bought cameras and things like that. So having some of those same conversations about, you know, what you can do, um, what they can do to help equipment, equip them going forward. Obviously, it's a tough time because a lot of things are still out of stock. Um, uh, but it's, I think it's important that they're, they're continuing to have those conversations too. Gotcha. How about you, Darius? Yeah, um, it's like, like you know, what's been said here, um, Manny and uh, Michael, uh, it's, it was something like, like you said, I did, I procrastinated on um, getting that stuff up and running. I knew I wanted us to kind of go into that realm eventually. Uh, but having, I think around when the year came in, uh, as you know, Daniel, I got a new job. And um, and also I have my own business when I do graphics, photography. And I, so between my new job and my business, you know, and I hate to say it, but church kind of fell in that realm. I, I do it on Sunday, I, you know, sometime on Wednesday. I was just kind of doing what I could do since I was literally the only person at the church with media experience. Um, so it, it was a lot of uh, like trying stuff. And I, right, so I got the cam link, you know, cam link wouldn't work with OBS and that didn't work because my computer was not updated and this and that. So I get one thing working, you get the video side working. And then like everybody said, the audio wasn't right. Um, it'll go out or something wasn't connected right. Or, um, and then I bought a Zoom recorder and was putting in multiple mics in my Zoom recorder and lining that out to the camera. Of course, with that, it's a lot of static and signal issues. And and just every every week was something, something crashed. And like Mandy said, I what took me to what long as I realized because we went to drive in church, you had to be hardwired, because if you're not, then you know, either you're getting a blurry signal because you're outside or you're far from the church. Um, and then what's crazy is um, our church really didn't even have uh, Wi-Fi set up because we just that's something we didn't really need um, at the time. So we had to actually get Wi-Fi during the during the process, um, and you know it, it was a lot of it's, every week was something failing, but every week you're learning something new, um, and then now we're still sort of piecing it together because. Uh, like now we're still using my computer. So if I got to leave and if I'm not there or something happens to me, then, you know, and like, uh, I think, is it Ryan? Yeah, he, you know, be training someone. Um, I'm, I'm in a, in my church, it's like a generational gap. It goes from like teens to 40, 50 year olds. And it's, it's not really many in between. And I got like teens leaving to go off to college. And then the 40, 50 year olds like, you know, how you get on Instagram? I only know how to get the app, you know, and it's all like, who do I train um, that's savvy enough? And so uh, my pastor called his, um, was it Aaron and and her? Albert, was, I, Jesus, I, I'm missing the uh, reference. What? He had the helpers. Um, they were they were helping him. So he was like, you need to train up somebody. Um, and, and that's something I, I haven't really been able to done, do. Uh, I was going to do SOPs, you know, where I just kind of have, you know, tutorials, uh, strength, screen capture while I'm teaching them how to do stuff, whoever comes behind me. But then we run into the thing of we ain't got no computer. So if I teach them and I ain't there, they can't. So it's a lot of different moving parts to it. 
And again, I wish I would have started training someone before the pandemic and trying to piece that together. Um, but listen, it's been to the point where this could spark another business uh, where, cause I, a lot of churches in rural areas have been hitting me up. Like, okay, I see what you're doing with your church. And when you share, how did you do that? Like, what are you doing? And um, so the failures have been lessons and um, it's just been a, a great ride and has been some headaches. And, you know, me and the pastor frustrated. He's like, well, what's going on? Why does it keep dropping out? Why the audio sounding like this? And um, just bought a mixer this week and the audio sounded great. Tried it yesterday. So that's another milestone. So we, we're getting there, and, but we're still kind of piecing stuff together because the budget really ain't, you know, where we want it to be because we're still working on trying to get a building and all that stuff. But uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a learning lesson as well. Um, and yeah, so I'm learning not to procrastinate and go ahead and get it done. <laughs> And I, 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 I what do you say? Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I say that. Oh, I want to say one more thing. Just, uh, I think another real thing that uh, may have been an aspect um, from a audio standpoint, um, like Mike was saying, I think telling churches or trying to explain to churches that if you do have one mixer, you have to figure out how to cater the mix. Um, I think that's one thing that, like you were saying, um, I know you guys engineers, so we're good friends. Um, he is a really good guy. I think it's just one of the things where you have to learn how to, if you're going to use one mixer, figure out if you're going to use the aux in and create a mix, or are you going to send the house mix? And if you are going to send the house mix like, like Mick, like where we were doing previously while we were down for a moment, um, I think it's just a matter of understanding translation and understanding how mixes translate from point A to point B and being able to understand that your house mix can't be a 10 and then your stream mix is probably going to be a four and a half. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to sacrifice on the standpoint of True. your house mix is a seven, your stream mm -hmm. mix can be a six, you know, which is cool if they're kind of even, you know, that's one of those things where, you know, it's just even with, you know, like video and stuff, you just have to understand like, okay, if I buy this camera, I have to understand the capabilities of this camera. And I have mm -hmm. to understand, well, if I don't buy a high light camera and a low light camera, then I need lighting. It's little things like that. And I think that we have to definitely implement and make sure that when we are passing on information or getting people to buy stuff or trying to find stuff to supplement for what's out of stock, making sure that they understand, hey, this is going to work, but you may have to take this extra precaution. Or when I fix the audio, mm -hmm. you still may have to do these precautions when I leave because you still may have to do a little bit of tailoring to find that sweet spot. Like this is a sweet spot for me and I know how it should feel, you know, because this is what I do. But at the same perspective, you may want your church to feel just a little bit different than what my ear is hearing. So that's just one of the things that I just want to throw back out there. Like you have to understand how to cater the streaming mix. It's not like mixing house. It's you you can miss a couple of things when you're mixing house or mixing audio live. You know, you can get away with a couple of things, but on stream is super detailed. And it doesn't have to be necessarily yeah. polished like a yeah. studio record, but yeah. it definitely has to have some type of tailoring. You have to have a special niche and a special ear to hear like, okay this has to translate this way, or this has to move in this direction to translate well to the stream. And yeah. then I'll kind of cater my house mix to that, you know, from that perspective. Yeah. And I, I think that that goes to, um, I remember when I was, uh, I, I worked with Marty, the audio director at, at World Overcomers. And one, one thing we used to always say is, always have a battle that audio is better than video. And or I say video is better than audio. And so it'd be this battle. But now it's like the two have are kind of meshing together and becoming one because it's so important to have both of them at the both of them to be excellent in, in, a, in a sense, uh, because now it's not just it's not just the people in the congregation anymore is is the people that are watching at home at their at their homes on their phones um so it, it makes it so that i always look at at audio and video as as an outfit you can have a, a nice outfit but have on some raggy shoes 
then your outfit is is ragged. I'm, I mean, you know, just, and, and I'm not saying that anybody has a raggedy outfit or anything like that. But well, you heard what but you say, brother. Yeah, you got to have your shoes tight. Yeah, you got to have, have, have everything. You got to coordinate, coordinate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, and, and another thing, um, Darius, to go back to your point, is that, um, and Pastor Brooks, you said you said it as, as well, is that more than ever, um, the media ministry is no longer payment to something. It's now an investment. It, 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 it should have been like that um, a long time ago, but now more than ever, it's an investment because of how important the, 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 the church is, in, is no longer, the church is the people, but the church building is no longer a building. Right now is the internet, the media, uh, video, audio. So it's, it's yeah. like, Go, go ahead, Pastor Brooks. Yeah, I was going to say specifically for us, we uh, we outgrew like the space that we're in right now where we've been recording. We were in a high school. So the money we were putting into the high school and to that whole space, you know, we just reallocated it back to our media budget. It was like, so now I can go get, you know, some of these cameras and, you know, uh, some of this stuff. And, and one of the things that I you know I would say also with that is the consumer has changed. What, what cons- how people consume the worship experience has changed. And so yeah. one of the things I yeah. think is challenging, a lot of my church, they watch the service on their television in their living room and they, they get it up on there. And one of the things I started realizing, you know, all throughout the rest of the week, they're watching Netflix and, you know, they're watching, you know, uh, uh, satellite and all these different things. Uh, and not that we say we should be that, but now our consumers' eyes and ears are so much more aware of low video quality, of mm-hmm. low audio quality. Yep. And so, yep. you know, that's, right. that's why I think one of the reasons uh, you all are so essential and just understanding that that's, uh, I, I, we, I, I used to get text messages from my members. Hey, I don't know if you noticed this. I was like, no, I, I didn't know this. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for the feedback that I didn't ask for. God bless you. <laughs> that's my message. You know, our consumer has changed. Now everybody's an expert. None of them can change it or fix it, but everybody ready to tell you that it ain't right, you know. So I think just being aware, just being aware of that, that you know, like that, it takes time and it takes an investment, you know. Exactly. Yeah, you made a really good point. Everyone's an expert, and it's I monitor the, the Facebook feed during service every week, and the last thing I want to hear is we can't hear or such and such is off in the comments. So <laughs> yeah, I'm an expert, but at the same time, we want to make sure everything's on point. So. Yeah, y'all not getting the uh, it's too loud thing no more though. See, that's what everybody <laughs> they're like looking back like, turn it, down. turn it. We're not getting out. Get your remote out, turn the volume down, press the little uh, thing. You can do it. Exactly. You don't don't have to spend spend money on on ear earmuffs for the uh for the congregation yeah. no more, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, an article from the Washington Post on April fourth, twenty twenty, uh, says, and I quote. The novel coronavirus is pressing painfully on the soft underbelly of the U.S. of U.S. houses of worship finances. About a third of all congregations have no savings, according to 2018-2019 congregational congregation study. Just 20 percent streamed their services and 48 percent were able to accept donations electronically. The study this study found keying out the point that only 20% of the churches in the U.S. are streaming their services. So I looked up how many num- how many churches are in the U.S., and the last number I really could find was about 384,000. Uh, and this was a, from a study back in 2012. That's, a, that's the last one I could find. So we're going to say a est- this is an estimate. 384,000, and 20% of that is only 70- 76,800 churches out of 384,000 churches that are doing streaming. What do you think are some of the reasons some churches are not streaming? And what do you say to those churches that are not streaming? And so Pastor Brooks, I wanna, I wanna start with you since you're, you're your pastoral uh, head, of, head of this uh, conversation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I, I think some of the reasons, you know, uh, I, I do wanna say that there are churches that their people would not prior to this consume the church through a streaming platform. Like they just, they just had no desire. 
you know, I grew up in a little country church and uh, mother of the church, she want to be at the church. She don't, she don't want to hear the sermon. She, she want to be at church. She wants to be there. So I think there is a pocket of it that uh, feels that way. But I think also there's another uh, group of people that just don't see uh, the need for it. And so I know for me as a pastor, you know, and a communicator uh, now going on like 16 years, I was trained to preach to people, not a camera. Mm. Mm. You know, um, my, especially coming up in the, you know, contemporary black church, the engagement and exchange, that was how, that's how I was trained. And so for a long time, you know, who, it didn't matter who was not in the room to me. I was preaching to the people in the room. And so that was my primary concern. And also I would say that the goal of the church for a long time was get people to the church instead of getting the church to the people. And so now with COVID-19 hitting, it has forced the church to say, I can't get you here. So now I got to get the church to you. And so I think uh, that's one of the things that has kind of caused the church and the church has struggled, not just with this, but I think historically over the years have struggled with these type of transitions. There's a book uh, I would encourage pastors that, that are watching to read. It's called Canoeing Up a Mountain. And it's about the story of uh, Lois and Clark, the explorers, and how they were sent west to find the Pacific Ocean. And they were on uh, the Missouri River and they were canoeing, but they got to the in the Missouri River thinking, it would lead back to the ocean, but they got to the Rocky Mountains. And here it is, they like, well, what do we do now? And the natives in the area say, listen, you gotta go over the mountain. The problem is you can't carry a canoe over the mountain. Mm. So this wow. is where I feel like the church wow. is, where we are still trying to canoe up a mountain. Wow. You know, and so at some point you have to ditch the canoe your goal and mission to make disciples, that's all still the same. We still got to get to the Pacific Ocean, but we're not going to be able to do it the way we once done it. And so wow. being willing to ditch the canoe to get over the mountain is, I think, one of the challenges that the church has had. And uh, that's one reason I think like streaming the video, even, you know, collecting offerings stuff online, all those different things is we're some some people just not ready to get rid of the canoe because it was effective and it's been effective. And I think it will be again at some point. But right now we're, we're standing at the foot of the Rocky Mountains and we got to ditch the paddle and canoe. It's okay. Hey, let's be willing to be flexible and pivot uh, and say like the mission is still important. And for me as wow. a pastor, it doesn't matter to me what I got to do. If I got to ditch the canoe, cool. If I got to learn Adobe yeah. Premiere, if I got to learn how to mix, you know, online. I'll figure it out because I want to be a learner because the mission is too important for me to like, I don't know. I've never done this before. Yeah, yeah. I think ditching the canoe is, you know, for my illustration standpoint of it, that makes any sense. Like, I think that's one of the things we, we have to figure out how to do. Wow. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. How about you, Seth? Yeah, I think, uh, man, I think I feel like every every obstacle is an opportunity for creativity. You know, so like when we hit that that wall and we feel like we can't go any further, you know, the idea of like having to think differently. And I think for us, for most of us, we really wanted this season to be like a, a just an interruption. Like we're just gonna, we're gonna return you to your regularly broadcast <laughs> program as soon as possible. Yeah. And yeah. and we're, we're months into this thing at this point, looking at it going, it's not an interruption. Like this is a full blown disruption, you know, of everything that we've yeah. done before as a church and as a Western culture, you know, like that has been very consumer driven. And so like, what does it mean really to go harder after people? And for some people who are looking at the church in ways that they never had before, you know, because mm -hmm. they've lost hope, they've lost people, they've lost, you know, they're, they're grieving in some ways. And so I think just being that voice in the places where people already are, you know, which is media, like they're already in those places. I think it does have a, a really vital role just in our culture, an important time um, to really pursue something different, to think outside the box, you know, to really think about even if I'm like to an extreme measure almost like what would it what would it mean for me? Like if we could never get gather again as a large gathering, you know, as, a, as the church, how do we still advance the mission without the building? You know, how do we still communicate the message of the gospel and media to me like technology those things are such a great vehicle to do that um but it does cause you to have to think to invest differently to process things differently and uh yeah i think it's that's it's good man wow that's really good. good 
That's real good. Um, so let's pivot a little bit out of out of. Can I out add of, one more thing? Go, to go ahead, yes sir. Just, yes sir, just, man. I'm thinking about that pastor that's watching out <laughs> right now. Um, we got to be careful where we put our identity, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. so if we put our identity in the worship gathering, if we put our identity in even in good. media, you know, our identity is yeah. found in Christ and that work and the mission. And and I know a lot of times when, especially when media directors come and say, hey, we need to do this and we need to do that. Uh, sometimes pastors feel like, well, are you trying to say what we used to do isn't good enough anymore or right. it doesn't work? And so it's a kind of that attack on on uh, uh, sometimes our identity. And so just making sure, pastor, that you don't put your identity in, in how you do it. Your yeah. identity is what you do. Yeah. And that's shared the gospel. That's and good. We want to do that anyway. And media has been a part of it as long as we can go, like we've used different things, whether they did it in amphitheaters, whether they did it on a boat, whatever, you know, Jesus, those things were tools to use to magnify the voice. Yeah. And we want to use the tools that we have now to magnify the voice because the message is that important. So just making sure we're careful about what we put our identity. That's wow. good. Wow, sending all donations to Vertical Church. That's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's real that's good. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, so Matthew 28, 16 through 20, the Great Commission. Jesus tells us to go out and make disciples of all nations to spread the word to people wherever they are. Um, these days, people spend an increasing amount of time, like we said, on their laptops, tablets, and iPhones. Should we not use the technology available to us and meet them there? Yes, we should. Um, we're called to extend the message uh, to people wherever they are, and technology allows us to do exactly that. But sometimes as media directors, we can get lost in the production, church business, other distractions in the church that can take our eyes off the Great Commission. Uh, has, and I, I will I'll give this question to everyone. Has this pandemic increased or given you a new outlook on your role? in the Great Commission? And if so, if it has, how so? Uh, let's start with you, uh, Manny. Um, I think realistically, it's definitely pushed me um, just as a leader um, for not only, you know, not the guy, but, you know, right under the guy, you know, as a leader from my standpoint and as a leader outside of this, it definitely has pushed to make sure this works. I think that's the real thing, to make sure this all works, make sure it's prospering and making sure that we are definitely being as effective as possible so that the people that are watching that we can, like Pastor Andy says, we can fish for them. You know, we can be fishermen and fish for them, you know, and bring them in, you know, and create disciples and, you know, create a path where they can join online or, you know, be a part of the ministry in any way possible, you know, you know, from the stage, you know, put in a man emojis, all of those things um, really makes the consumer or the listener feel a part, still a part of the service outside of the building. Um, Cause we are the church, you know, and the building's the building. So definitely just making sure that all of the people feel interactive and feel still personal. Although it's, you know, two, three, four, whatever the number is, amount of people watching with me, you know, you know, the pastor or the, minister or the worship leader speaking to me and he's trying to disciple me and he's, you know, putting a word, you know, out there to speak into my heart, you know, so that I may continue to follow Christ and I may continue to, you know, want to, you know, have my relationship, even though I can't, you know, speak to the pastor, you know, or talk to him after church about a problem I'm having, or I may not be able to reach him at this time, but definitely you know, it definitely has made sure, it made us step up to like, this has to work. We got to do what we got to do. We got to buy something. If we got to go get it, you know, we got to still be fishermen, even from an online platform. So that's just gotcha. my standpoint on it. Gotcha. How about you, Darius? Um, <clears throat> before, you know, all this hit my, before I got to my church, uh, they were using cell phones to go live. Um, no audio, no nothing. It was just two phones. And they wasn't even iPhones. So that was even worse. Uh, they, they were using Androids. <laughs> uh, you know, and I had this mindset, like, I was there. Because what's crazy is, because I'm a, 
like for me, my attention span is real different. So um, if I'm at church, I got to be working because I won't be until I, I hear the word more when I'm working. And uh, so even when I was not even a member and I was just visiting um, with my then girlfriend, now wife, like uh, I was visiting and I would have my camera <laughs> and I would just be taking pictures and doing stuff for him. And I wasn't even nowhere near being a member. Um, you know, I didn't realize how important that was to them. And even when I became a member, I'm like, well, even if I miss a day, they go back to what they were doing before I got there. Like, just go to go live on their phones. You know, they were doing that before I got there. So, you know, they don't really, you know, that was my mindset. And then when all this hit, it was a Sunday where something happened with my family. And, um, you know, I let the pastor know that early that Sunday morning, hey, I got to attend to some stuff, which he would have understood if I hadn't, but he was just like, hey, man, just let me know a little bit ahead of time if you're going to be out because, you know, we haven't trained anybody, you know, and, you know, you're the person that, that does this, and um, I don't want to go back and, you know, quality and, you know, stuff like that, so because you really elevated us, and, um, you know, I want to keep that same consistency. And that let me know that just because somebody else can just plug up a phone that, uh, it's be, it's important for them to actually hear it good, uh, see it good, and um, like Dan, you said, it was, it's always been a, a video more important than audio. And for me, I, I'm an audio engineer, so um, I think audio is more important because if video go out, they can still hear you, they can still get that word. But like he said, now it's becoming a marriage between the two. And um, so now I'm, I'm making sure everything is on point, video, audio, because now I realize that in this pandemic that we might be the only word somebody gets, or we might be the only exposure to, um, somebody could be going through some stuff, depression, suicidal thoughts, and they turn on that, that broadcast, and one, one thing they heard can change their whole um, life around. So uh, getting to the church, making sure everything is on point, and stuff still happens, stuff still fails, technology is technology, but um, knowing I tried my best and I'm there, I feel like um, the role is now 10 times more important of a media director. And But it, it, sometimes it gets me that I should have had that same zeal before this, but I think that's the point of all this. You know, we're looking at it from a spiritual standpoint. God, he, he's waking up a whole lot of people. Um, he's waking up the church um, to say that, hey, y'all have all these tools at your disposal. You know, stop, you know, being in your, you know, traditions and uh, your old way of thinking. It's time to do, you know, have a new way of reaching people. So I feel like our roles and the knowledge that we have as media directors, engineers, videographers, um, it's, it's going to just get, it's, it's going to become more important in the next year or two, because like uh, Seth said, like it, it's, it wasn't an interruption, it's a disruption. And I, I don't think the world is going back to the way it was ever. So um, it's only, it's, it's, we, we, this, is, this is going to change how we do things for the rest, uh, you know, of the existence of the world, so. Gotcha. Uh, Mike? I think, I think Darius and Manny really hit it. I think you know, the, the importance of why we do what we do has been amplified a hundredfold. Um, it's, it's one thing to get people in the church and they can hear the word, but for us to now, nobody can come into the church, nobody can, can get here to hear the word. So it's on us to make sure we're on point, to make sure the audio is on point, to make sure the people can see and hear what's happening because there's there's so much going on in the world right now. I mean, obviously everybody's talked about the pandemic, but there's so much other stuff that people are going through, dealing with social injustice, you know, whatever it might be, there, there's so much going on. And for the church, the church should be that beacon. And so we, we have to be kind of on that heel so people can see us like, hey, here's where you can find us. It, it's not, you know, you, you have to try to call them and find us. It's we're right here, we're, we're leveraging the same technology that the world is using, but using it for God's purpose. So I think it's it's exemplified what we do, how we do it. And, you know, one of the things that our leadership always talks about is doing things in excellence. So doing the, the streaming in excellence, getting to church early enough to make sure pro presenter is set up, lighting set up, camera set up, 
you know, everything is working and functional the way it should be. And if those issues do come up, like I talked about before with audio, that we're able to pivot, make the adjustments we need to, because the word still needs to get out. Um, Seth? Yeah, man, these guys, uh, they've said it, but I'll, uh, <laughs> my wife always says, she talks about, you know, with raising kids, how we're like, we're sprinkling gold dust, you know, and over a period of time that it, it adds up to something of value, you know, and, and so, so there's one aspect of, I think, you know, doing ministry in this context like this, that, that really, you know, that's, that's a relevant statement to what we're doing, you know, in media ministry, because it's not a, it's not, it's not necessarily an event. You know, I think as Western culture has really taught us and we've learned so much about what an event is and the church has kind of adapted to that as kind of being this like transactional, you know, I go on Sunday and I, you know, I do this event and then I look up and it's the next event, you know, like this, I'm going to lunch or I'm doing whatever, you know, I'm going to this next thing. And you try to apply that principle to this season, like to COVID and you, you go to your church thing and you look up and it's still COVID, you know, and <laughs> And then we, we do it with social justice issues and the injustice that's plagued our country forever. You know, that's a, there are processes. They're not, they're not events. And so when I think about discipleship and the Great Commission, like that's a process. You know, the church was made for processes of growing people into Christ likeness. You know, so we've, we've talked a lot with our team, like every week when we do our worship recording, it's really like, man, we're submitting this work to the Lord to go, hey, I don't know who's going to watch. Like, I have no idea, but let's just, let's pray for those people. Let's pray for the people who are going to be viewing this, you know, sharing it, whatever it is, just that God would meet them where they are, you know, in the process of them becoming, you know, maybe Christians or, you know, just continuing in their faith, their walk with, with the Lord. So those have been some of my thoughts. I think just thinking through like the, like, how am I engaged in the process, you know, and not trying to approach it from just an event kind of transactional you know, just remembering these are people, you know, these are relationships and, and, uh, you know, so how do we, how do we help just contribute to that end, you know, of helping them in their journey to Christ, you know, yeah. and, um, uh, and just kind of approaching it holistically like that. So that's good, man. That's good. Pastor Brooks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things I, I try to teach our church and all the volunteers and everyone that serves, uh, is the why is more important than the what. It's good. The why yeah. is yeah. more important than the what? Yeah. Why yeah. we do what we do is more important than what we do. Because what yeah. we do, we see that right now, could change any particular day. But why yeah. we do what we do, that's going to remain the same. And it actually, you know, reminds me of Luke chapter number five, verses one through eleven, when Jesus calls Peter and Andrew and the uh, brothers to come and follow after him. And it's the story of where, uh, you know, some of you have heard the story of he throws the net on the other side to ca catch the fish uh, that he didn't catch the night before. But before he does that, Jesus actually steps into the boat of Peter and asks him to cast off a little into the deep so he can teach, push off from the shore just a little bit so he can teach to the people. And so one of the things I thought was just really, really important about that text is that Peter is a fisherman and Jesus uses his boat as his platform. Mm -hmm. He uses his boat as his platform and one of the things i try to remember is that while we can put a lot of energy and effort into the platform we got to remember why we got the platform in the first place and that's to teach that's the message that's to connect message. and yeah. uh, uh so G peter has to submit his life submit his boat submit his work say jesus step into this boat step make this your platform and i think that's what i think the church should be doing that's what i think many ministries doing that we are using whatever we have for the platform of the, the message of the gospel of jesus christ and i think it's important uh, uh to continue to remember that the why is so much more important than the what when you get frustrated when it's difficult when you don't want to invest or certain things like the why is more important than the what and i, and I would also add like it's not just sunday service it's not just sunday service that media ministry is so necessary uh, uh, we, you know, use the media to connect all types of stories. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have members uh, now that have never been to this church. We, we, we've we've taken people to new partners. You know, our, our launch program for new membership. We have uh, groups. I mean, we have people that have never even been to North Carolina before that now are connected to our church. 
uh, we're going to be telling stories, you know, because of our media team being able to, you know, help record and mix and all that stuff. Like we're partnering with Ronald McDonald House. We're telling more than just the story of Sunday morning. And so right now our shift is, is now getting past the Sunday morning experience. How do we use media technology to tell, to seize the other 167 hours in the week uh, to use that for the gospel message? And so like that, that for me is, I think, a really important, important point, but that the why is so much more important than what the gospel and making disciples it actually fuels me to actually make whatever adjustments and pivots I need to make to do that. Man, and you bring up a great point, uh, Pastor Brooks, uh, and I think that's um, that's something I, I, I know me as a media director, I, I, I kind of, you know, sometimes forget. I, I've been doing media for about 15 years. And so when you've been doing it for some time, you forget the why. You, you just uh, forget the, forget why, why you're doing it and you just do it. It's it just secondhand to you. And, and I think it's, it's times like these, like this um, in pandemics uh, where Christ, you know, Christ has slowed down everything and, and, and really uh, open the eyes of of why we do this, especially as as media guys. Why why we why it's so important to to submit to God's word because to to help get His word out. Because if we're not submitted to His word, we'll do this not wholeheartedly and and just uh, and just really try to get by. And, and so I think that's that's the, that's important is to to submit to have a submission to His word. Uh, to constantly remember the why we're doing this. Um, my last question, um, Mark's, Mark 6, 30 to 31 says, the apostles gathered, this is a story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Uh, they gathered around and reported to him all they had done and taught. Uh, then because of so many people were coming and going, they didn't even have a chance to eat. He said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place uh, get some rest. Um, but if we look at verse seven in, in chapter six, we see that God was the one that sent them out two by two uh, to to cast out spirits and, and to preach the word. Um, sometimes we get so wrapped up in doing ministry work that we won't get rest. Sometimes having ha having the thought process that we're doing God's work so we're fine. Um, but the Lord, knowing knowing the season and environment, and knowing how much we need we need rest, and how good it would be for us, has to make has to make us take advantage of the moment and rest. As media directors, pastors, worship art pastors, I know for for me, I've, I'm always going after one going after one thing ends, even going after another thing, even after one thing ends, just constantly going. Um, I'm, I'm not on the, I'm on to the next thing, rarely getting any rest. Um, I know for some of you, you're actually doing the live recording on Sundays. So with your, your, uh, your palette of work, may be a little bit, uh, maybe not as much because you just really have it having on Sundays. Um, but so, some people like myself, we're filming the pastor during the week and editing, uh, during the, uh, editing during the weekend, posting the various um, media outlets, and God forbid, uh, like Pastor Brooks, man, he was doing it all. Uh, last question, how, how have you guys been mentally since everything has started with the pandemic? And let's start with you, Darius. Whew, uh, as you know, we work together. I yeah. know you can be over there sleep sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, it's but even before all this, uh, I I was doing a hundred thousand things, and um, it's something that I I wrestled with was uh, finding balance uh, because I forget I failed to mention which I should have said first, and she gonna get me. But even in the midst of all this, I got married. Uh, in the middle of a pandemic, and hey, Doc, let's make sure we make sure you say that clearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm gonna say that one more time. I got married to the most wonderful, amazing woman in the world. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> but um, you know, on top of a new job and a business, um, getting married, 
and doing media ministry uh, between all of that and still finding time to, uh, you know, be with family and, and rest. Uh, I, I, I don't I don't rest. And even now, um, I'm at my office and I'm doing work. And as soon as we get off, I'm going to go back and do some more projects. And uh, so that's something that I've been dealing with the last month or so is figuring out how to uh, prioritize rest in the midst of all that. And mentally, uh, I can say that it has been draining um, because on, well, cause for me, uh, when I got married, I moved even further away. So when I took the media job, uh, you know, well, when I accepted, you know, the role of media director, uh, I was 15 minutes away from the church. Now I'm an hour away. So, you know, and I and we record Wednesdays and Sundays. Like Daniel said, I was recording and editing during the week. Um, so driving that hour after I worked, you know, and driving 30 minutes to the church and then driving an hour back, you know, to, to the house. It's a lot of driving and a lot of moving and going. So mentally, I've been having to force myself to, you know, not take on as many clients, declining some people who ask me to do stuff. And that's hard for me because I come from the hood. So you don't turn down no work and no money because you got to go get it. So um, that mentality, that survivor's mentality is always with me is that you don't, you don't, you don't miss an opportunity. And I had to learn that it's okay that you know you don't have to take everything you don't have to do everything and learning to actually lean on my wife for stuff and the stuff that she wants to help with um learning how to delegate learning how to uh say hey i need some help um that's something that i've really learned in this time for, for my sanity um but mentally um i'm in a good space um in the middle in the in the heat of it around april may it was getting rough um because everything was so new and you learning on top of balancing your family, your church, your job, and everybody shutting down or revving up. I actually, I actually worked more during the pandemic than you know before, because um, everything kind of went on ten. So it's been an adjustment, but mentally, um, learning to rest has been my my challenge. Gotcha. Uh, how about you, Mike? Yeah, I can definitely echo um, what Darius was saying. I think for me. Um, it probably hit probably a month ago where I was like, man, I'm, I'm starting to actually feel it, you know, um, being at church still every Sunday, every Wednesday, in between that filming special projects for the church, uh, filming within a night of worship where we pre-recorded it. Um, so, fil so filming that, editing that, getting it ready to broadcast the following week, still working a full-time job, still running a business where, the business slowed down for a little bit, but then it, it kept going with, you know, video projects, photography. Um, and I'm, I'm the type of person that I don't, I, I rarely slow down. And my wife always tells me, you know, you should take a break. You, you should take a Sunday off, take a Wednesday off. Um, but I, I understand kind of the importance and significance of what we're doing in the media ministry. And for me, it, it, at times it's hard to let it go because I don't want it to, to fail or, I don't want it to stop. I wanted to keep moving. Um, I am fortunate enough to have a great team at Raleigh North. So a great team of volunteers who are there every week with me, helping to kind of push what we're doing forward. Um, but again, at the same time, I still want to be there because I don't want to let them down. I don't want, I don't want the ministry down. Um, so it's, it's still having that ownership and accountability to keep that moving and keep it going while I'm still juggling, you know, the 10 or 15 things outside of that. So I think for me, I'm, I'm learning the importance of, of slowing down and taking that break. Um, again, even though we're in a pandemic, things aren't slowing down. So it's, it's, it's important, even more important now um, to take that mental break and to just slow down and, and just hit, hit the brakes. Even if, if it's for a minute, just hit the brakes, slow down, regroup, um, and keep pushing forward. Gotcha. Manny? Um, I think I'm resting a little bit more um, only because um, I don't know about uh, everybody else, but I also did a little bit of touring outside of this. So, you know, it's it's cool for me because now I'm at home more with my wife and my daughter. So it's helping a little bit more. And then my wife just started back school. So I'm up with my daughter every morning now um, and having her more often. So that's a lot better, you know, having more family time. But I think 
my rest is actually, even though I'm still working and God's still supplying, you know, I haven't missed a beat, you know, financially during this, you know, God's still supplying. Um, but it's not as much, you know, it's flying around to this place and that place and dealing with different attitudes and different, you know, personalities and they have to come back home and be dad, you know, dad again. So I think this is actually for me, it's actually a moment of rest. You know, I think God really, yeah, you know, we want to be on the road. We want to, you know, we had, you know, I had two, three full out tours that got canceled, you know, and I was hyped, you know, because, you know, it was definitely with some people I wanted to work with and had worked with in the past. And, you know, one thing leads to another and you're on another gig. But at the same token, I think just from a standpoint, this has actually been more rest for me even though, you know, I'm still doing my daily things, you know, at the church from that perspective, because our stuff didn't necessarily change for us. You know, we just took, we had to take a small curve, like I said earlier, but I think it's just one of the things where it's just more of rest for me personally, because I, I'm actually slowing down to a degree. Gotcha. Uh, Pastor Brooks? Uh, I would say, you know, uh, probably the end of May is when like it hit hard for me. Like I was like, man, I got to do something different. Um, you know, between preaching, you know, you know, writing brand new sermons every single, you know, uh, week to uh, even the stuff that was that's happening with social justice, uh, leading a multi-ethnic church, you know, I get pulled into, then, you know, you know, as well as Pastor Drone, there's a lot of call and pull on that. And, you know, our kids, you know, I got small ones. Uh, but I think one of the things for me, you know, Dan, I don't know if you know this, and I don't know if I shared this at Vision. So two years ago, I was diagnosed with a severe case of uh, clinical depression. <clears throat> and so uh, I was diagnosed with depression because essentially I, I burn out. And I had this mentality of going, 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 going. And what I realized is that I was killing myself for people that Jesus had already died for. Oh, man. <laughs> I want wow. you to hear what I'm saying. Wow. Jesus Christ didn't die for me to work for him. He died for me to walk with him. And so in all the work I was doing for the church and all the sacrifices that I was making for, for Vertical and any other church, you know, my father has a church in Garner uh, and all these other churches I was trying to help, you know, it, it I was suffering and uh, trying to do things that I'm not really gifted to do. The quickest way to get to exhaustion is do something you're not gifted to do. That the easiest way to get tired of writing is writing with the hand you're not normally good at writing with. You know, <laughs> try if you're right handed, try to write your name with your left hand. You'll get tired quicker, and it won't look as pretty. Like it just it won't work, work out well. Yeah. So I was diagnosed with depression, and one of the things I learned is that I was just I was just going too much, and I didn't understand that I rest so I can work. I don't work until I have to rest, and those are two different things. And again, it kind of goes back to that identity thing. And really for me, uh, and I want to encourage anyone that's, that's watching, uh, I think it's Genesis chapter 25. A lot of people know the story of Esau and Jacob when there is the exchange of, when he sells mm -hmm. his birthright, he sells mm -hmm. his birthright to, to yeah. Jacob. And the problem in that text is, it says that Esau came in from the field where he was a hunter doing his thing, but the text says he was exhausted. And the condition for compromise is always exhaustion. Hmm. When you're tired, you'll cut corners. When you're tired, when you're burnt out, you, you'll step outside of boundaries. You don't got no business stepping outside of you. You'll cut these corners. And so uh, one of the things I, I, you know, I just want to encourage with rest is that you need rest so you can do what you do well, you know? And so for me, I had to learn to take a day. I mean, practice sabbatical. And my off day is a full day. Somebody asked me, hey, you know, Friday is my, my off day, if y'all want to know. If you say, hey, can we set up a meeting, uh, you know, and this, I'm just telling y'all for accountability sake. I'm just telling you yeah. something I had to practice because yeah. I was clinically depressed. I didn't want to preach. I didn't want to be at a church full of people, but it didn't matter. I was, I was depressed. And so uh, when people ask me, hey, can we set up something on Friday? I'm like, my day is full. Well, what are you doing? It's full for rest. My calendar says rest and restoration pretty much because I need to rest you know, to, to do what God has called me to do. And God calls us to this Sabbath, to this sabbatical context that he, what we pour out in six days, he can restore in us in one day. Mm -hmm. 
if we lean into him, if we press into him. And so, you know, uh, this whole pandemic, I definitely got to the month of end of May and we had to do something different. And so what we were able to do, and I had a fortunate ability to do this, is we did a, uh, a full month, all of June, we did refresh and I replayed old sermons uh, for five straight Sundays. We had, we replayed worship, we did everything because I couldn't record and write new sermons and edit and everything. I was like, listen, if I'm going to make it through the summer, you know, I got to stop now. Uh, Cause I don't want to be exhausted because the condition of compromise will always be exhaustion. Yeah. Wow. That, wow. Man, that's good. Uh, Seth. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> amen. All hey, of that. You got to go yeah. after that. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no, Seth. You got to go after that. <laughs> no, I think, uh, I think just the reality of like for some of like for some of us in this role, and I think for pastors that, our staff was like 16 we had like 16 people i think on staff and and, uh, and then you have this workload that then shifts to about four people you know like all of these this job of connecting people and uh resources and all these different things and and uh, so for some you know for smaller church it's it's a pastor who didn't really sign up for that you know who is not having to shift into media <laughs> and doing all these different things you know and uh, I think that reality of like, we can literally, we can find God in anything and we can completely miss him in, in everything, you know, like, so our work is not the end all, you know, and I think about particularly John, the gospel of John, how often, you know, John refers to himself as the one that Jesus loved. And, uh, you know, he didn't find his identity in his work, but just in in the reality of being the object of God's love, you know, like that was first and foremost, his identity was all about like being the beloved, you know, being in Christ. And, um, you know, God made us to be human beings, not human doings, you know, and Jesus's invitation was so much to his disciples all the time to come and be with him, you know, come follow me before he sends them out to go do the work. It's this invitation to be with our, our savior. And so I think the, 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 uh, spiritual disciplines, you know, so to speak of like, of, of Sabbath rest and just realizing, remembering that like the world doesn't revolve around me, you know, that I'm human. There's a limit to the extent of my own humanity. Um, yeah. and so, you know, having that, that sense of like, just getting, you know, respite to, to recharge, to be more focused, to be, and I think there's this lie we believe that like, if, if I take time off, then these other things aren't going to happen or who's going to pick up the slack, you know? And so all these different things, we, we kind of make the excuses because, you know, and those to me are indicators more of like, we we're finding our identity just in our work, you know, it's not in Christ. Yeah. And so coming back to that place, I think just to really, to be with God, you know, to allow our souls to be at rest, to do an inventory and i think to think about it even from the perspective of i'm not resting so that i do less but i really am thinking about it from a perspective of like this en enables me to do this for a longer period of time you know i'm actually going to be more effective more focused more energized you know just um get good sleep yeah don't drink too much coffee <laughs> eat eat well exercise and take a sabbath man like it's find a hobby that's that's it, man. Something they got nothing to do with technology. Go do something go outside. Else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. That's good. Can I say something else to that? Especially, for, I'm looking at you yeah. guys as leaders. Oh, yeah. Just this idea that you know you teach what you know, but you reproduce who you are. Yeah. And so you know whatever you're modeling for your media ministry team, they're going to take on that same you know model and you know, attitude of not resting. And so yeah. for me as a pastor, taking this context of resting and taking these days, like I'm trying to model something to the people that I lead to my church. I take Sundays off. I take, you know, I say, hey, listen, because I want you all to do that because I can't tell you to take it easy if I never model that as a leader. So you teach yeah. what you know, but you actually reproduce who you are. Wow. That's good. That's good. And, and I think especially in, um, and I know for me, um, this has probably been one of the hardest uh hardest times in my life uh mentally and 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 mentally just uh getting along just getting along with life and the the extra work of of the of the church and doing the things at the church is along with my job and life things um 
and one one thing that uh, that that I've learned in, in the scripture that, I, that I've uh, kind of cling to during the season was Matthew 11, uh, where where it said uh, 28, where it said, "Come to me, all who are weary and and burdened, and I will give you rest." And and in, in that is 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 for for me, it, it's saying you know come to me like god wants us to come to him jesus wants us to come to him he, he's yearning for us to come to him uh to cast all of our burdens all of our uh, to rest in him that whatever we're dealing with that we can find rest rest in him so and i, and I think that's in, that's important especially during this time of of uncertainty that you really don't know um so final thoughts um uh, uh, encouragement, whatever you like to say. Final thoughts that you would like to say to to the people watching this, the pastors watching this, as as well as give out your um, contact information um, for people that may want to get in touch with you. Uh, let's start with Darius. Yeah. So, um, contact is uh, my nickname is Boo Daddy. Uh, I'm also a music artist as well. I so. was wondering when I saw <laughs> it in the bottom of the screen, I said, Boo Daddy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm a music artist, so that's where that, that comes from. And I kind of took that name on, you know, in business and everything because it's catchy. People remember it. So that's Boo Daddy TVS uh, on everything. Boo Daddy TVS. Um, and you can find me at BooDaddyTVS.com. Um, you can find my media and, and stuff up there. So my portfolio and um, or my more professional one is uh, DariusCar.Works. Um, that's where my, my main portfolio is, DariusCar.Works. And, um, but everything else, social media is Boo Daddy TVS. Gotcha. Any last words? Um, I, I would say this. Uh, I was thinking about this for um, not, not for other media ministry people because, I mean, a lot has been given to them tonight. But for the pastors, uh, I just want to say trust us. Uh, you know, sometimes you might not understand what we're doing, what we need, uh, where we're going or where we're taking the media side of things, but uh, just trust us, uh, you know, don't get anxious or uh, we got you, we're going to hold you down. So if you're struggling with that with your media director, just know that he's always researching, thinking, planning, and you may not understand, but he does. And sometimes we can't articulate that, but just know you know, we're trying to steer you in the right direction. So, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, Manny? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Manny Kicks. Uh, that's K-I-C-K-S. <clears throat> uh, uh, Facebook, Manny Smith. Um, those are my two things. Um, or you can email me at Manny Text, T-E-C-H-S, at gmail.com. Um, you can email me there um, or DM me on social media. Um, I guess final words would be, I guess would be the one thing I teach my art class for all audio people when I do workshops. Um, just remember as uh, an engineer or the guy that just mixes, remember that you are the middleman between the worshiper and the people on stage. And it's your job to make sure you're doing your part to make sure their message is portrayed well, make sure it gets across. Because a lot of times, if people can't understand it, people don't hear it, um, it's muffled, then you're losing people paying attention. Um, you're losing your younger congregation. They're, they can't take you serious. And then, um, for lack of better words, when we do be, come back into the building, um, when stuff is not right audio wise, people don't necessarily show up until it's time for the pastor and they miss one of the most important parts of church that helps the church still function, which is tithes and offerings, which from that standpoint, then you can't take care of the needs of what you need for media, what you need to pay your staff, what you need to have those people in place. So just for all audio people, make sure you're doing your job to make sure you're portraying the most and be the most effective you can be because as the, you're the middleman between the seats, the streaming, to make everything come together and gel well so that those seeking and those hungry can get what they need from God and hear what God has to say. Gotcha. Um, Mike? 
Yeah, so I, I think I'll um, probably the, the biggest takeaway I think for me is we're always behind the scenes, right? So a lot of times people don't see or at times value the importance of our role. Um, so I say to media directors, audio techs, keep pressing forward. I think this pandemic is showing the world how important we are because our work has to keep going in, or, in order for the word to get out. So keep pressing forward in next ones. Um, in terms of contacting me, um, Cinema One Films, Facebook and Instagram, um, email address is info at cinemaonefilms.com. Gotcha. Uh, Seth? Yeah. Man, I don't know how to add it. These guys are, they got it covered, man. You got, you got it going on. Let's get it. <laughs> uh, man, I just, yeah, I think, I think keep it about your people. Um, you know, nothing communicates value, no amount of tools and toys and whistles like communicates value, like value communicates value. And so just continue to make it about your people. Uh, you know, for the media guys that are watching, I think just to continue to respect the people who are around you, you know, and fight for unity. Uh, just uh, those are those are struggling, you know, places. I think it can it can be easy just to be divisive or, um, you know, just not respect the people that are in leadership around you. And so I think just continue to lean into those relationships, trust in the Lord at work in their hearts, you know, even when you can't see what's going on. And um, yeah, and then just and rest. I mean, just taking the time to refresh and recharge and don't kill yourself. Um, you know, just, just keep leaning into the Lord, his spirit, you know, to, to give you life. And, um, yeah, my contact info, uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter, just Seth Dady, my last name, D-A-D-Y, not daddy. Um, <laughs> but boo daddy, we got boo daddy covered. <laughs> I can be Seth daddy. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah just seth Dady, d-a-d-y like lady but with a d and then uh s-d-a-d-y at sfchurch.com is my email um yeah it's good thank you seth yeah Pastor brooks yeah um i would say um you know again everything communicates uh you know, everything communicates what you do, communicates what you don't do, communicates what you say, communicates what you don't do, communicates something. Um, and even a lack of communication is the communication in itself. Uh, and I would say to uh, the pastors that are watching, you know, uh, the most important investment into your media ministry is your investment into the people uh, that make up the media ministry. I know a lot of times pastors can kind of, we can be guilty of looking at the people on our team as contract, you know, hirees, but I think it's important to invest in their lives, ask about things other than when the video is going to be up or <laughs> why isn't this working right, you know, really be invested into the person. Um, I think it's important that, you know, we are shepherds before we are our, our leaders. You know, we are not leaders that, that pastor, we're pastors that lead. And so that means we have to care about the people. And so one of the ways that I try to say this for our team uh, is that I want more for you than I want from you. And that's my prayer. That's my heart's posture. That I want more for you than I want from you. So I care more about who you are than I care about what you do. Uh, and, and to make sure it's not transactional uh, with your relationship, with your media team, your media leaders, or any of those other people. Because a lot of times as pastors, we want buy-in from everybody uh, uh, without being bought into them. And so I want to encourage you, you know, uh, to want more for your, your team than you want from them. Uh, you can reach me uh, on Instagram, Facebook, all those platforms, Twitter, Ryan underscore L underscore Brooks. Ryan underscore L underscore Brooks. I pastor Vertical Church. Uh, our website is verticalnc.org. Verticalnc.org. I don't want you to go on there to go critique my videos and audios, guys. I know you guys are like, let's see what this dude is doing. Let's see, he let's see what he's producing. I was already yeah. touching. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 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 I
Uh, but yeah, subscribe <laughs> to our YouTube channel for sure. That's probably where all our stuff is on Vertical NC. Uh, uh, we're the Orange Vertical Church. We're not connected to anything else. We're on our own, so it's the Orange logo. But uh, yeah, so uh, any way I can serve any of you guys. Oh, and also, I'm looking for a media director. None of the guys that are on here, but you can DM me. You can email me, ryanb at verticalnc.org. Uh, would love to, to talk with some guys because I need to get some of this stuff yeah. off of my plate. You understand me? Uh, yeah. I went to school for exegesis, you know, Greek and Hebrew. I, I didn't go for mixing and cue and the key light and all that stuff. I, and, you know, digital boys, it's not my thing. I don't want it to be my thing. I respect y'all. I want y'all to do it. <laughs> Please, if, if, you, if you're a media director out there and you, you're looking for a great church, a great uh, pastor to work for, Please reach out to Pastor Brian, Brian Brooks. Thanks um, for plugging me. I appreciate that, brother. <laughs> uh, Romans 10, 14 through 15 says, How then can they call on the one they never believe in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have never heard? And how can they hear without a, someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. In biblical times, the only way to carry good news was to bring it physically from town to town, place to place. Technolo technological advances, however, have opened up numerous communication channels, all of which we can use to amplify the rate at which we spread the word. We hope and pray that you are blessed by this conversation and receive something from it. To my fellow media directors, again, keep pushing and always remember to work unto God and not man. The work we are doing is spreading the gospel and touching more people at this time than we ever thought possible to touch. To my pastors, some of you have this pandemic under control. You are able to operate without slowing down, and that's awesome. Keep going. But some pastors may not have been as prepared for this pandemic as others. And you're barely getting by weekly with the streaming of your service. I implore you to pray and reach out to anyone on this panel, someone in the area, in your area that specializes in media production, or myself. The reason I ask you to pray first is not only because that is what we as Christians should do before we do anything or make any decision, but also I've seen too many times where churches bring in the wrong people, the wrong production person or company, and make a, a, bad, a bad decision worse. So it is very important to bring in the right person to do the job. Once again, thank you for tuning in and please be on the lookout for more content centered around church media ministry. And make sure you check out our website, www.completeconceptsmedia.com. Once again, my name is Daniel Dunstan, owner of Complete Concepts Media Group and media director for Vision Church here in Raleigh. I'd like to thank you again for joining us tonight. Pastor Brooks, will you please lead us out in prayer? Hey, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, all that you've done for us and through us, Lord, your love continues to shine bright in our lives, Lord, and we thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for everyone that is a part uh, this video, Lord. We thank you for Daniel and his family and even uh, you challenging him and pushing him to step out to even do this, Lord. We pray that you would continue to bless him in that and all of these media directors, worship directors, production leaders, Lord, we thank you that we get the opportunity to share your good news. God, we pray that you would strengthen us, that you would encourage us. Uh, God, we pray that you would resource us, but most importantly, Lord, that we would hear your voice and know your heart above anything else. And God, that the mission would continue to go forward, that people would be saved, that they would know the beautiful love of your son, Jesus, your, of your love through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you and bless you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.